This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is dubbed the iPhone SE. Not the SE2, not the iPhone 9. Oh no, this is the new iPhone Stimulus Edition. I'm pleasantly surprised with this little guy, especially when it was first announced because Apple being Apple, I was half expecting this phone to retail for $500 for the entry base model. But to the bewilderment of many, it seems everyone was pleasantly surprised and we all saw that beautiful $399 price tag. Luckily for you all, I have all three colors to showcase and review. But you know what else? I'm gonna let you all on a little secret. Nikki S. Molina, a YouTuber I viewed and looked up to even way before I started YouTube and I are hosting a collab giveaway where one of these right here could be yours. We're not playing any games here. You really could be the lucky one. Oh, and to make the giveaway more interesting, we're also throwing in AirPods Pro in there as a second place prize. How about that? If you want to find out how you can enter and walk away with one of these brand new SEs, you'll have to stick around until the end of the video. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop straight into these unboxings. <laughs> So of course, all of these three boxes are identical, albeit for minor differences depending on what color you get. On the front we can see we have our dank new wallpapers that I really enjoy. I don't know how Apple does it, but they always come out with these really cool wallpapers. On the top and bottom, attention has been placed here as we have color matched Apple logos. On the sides we see color matched iPhone branding, and on the back we have our storage capacity along with what is found inside the box. But we don't want a stupid box to tell us what's inside, we want to see it for ourselves. So peel off the plastic using the provided tab that makes these unboxing debris, lift open the lid and there she is. Our new, sexy iPhone SE that at first glance could easily be mistaken for an iPhone 8. And that's because the iPhone SE carries over with the exact same design, albeit with that monstrous A13 Bionic chip, which technically makes it one of the most powerful phones out on the market right now. Sadly, the iPhone 8 has now been discontinued directly through Apple and has now been replaced with this phone. Apple claims their A13 Bionic is the best in class and number one in terms of being the fastest chip out on the market right now. As is customary from Apple, we get our literature packet with designed by Apple in California along with a quick start guide, warranty information guide, and our coveted Apple stickers. Gonna add these to the collection that is now 100 plus strong. Crazy, I know. What is cool is that temporarily, if you pick up the product red iPhone SE, a portion of the proceeds will now contribute directly to the global fund to combat COVID. COVID-19. Seriously people, if you have no urgent need to be out, please stay home. Save some lives. Say what you'll say about Apple, but they have made just about every move right from donating to the global fund against the virus, having their employees safely at home with pay plus benefits, and releasing this budget conscious beauty into the smartphone realm that may or may not price other competitors out of business. Because come on, $400 for a brand new iPhone with modern specs? You can't beat it. But anyway, inside we also have our USB-A to lightning cord used to charge and sync our device, our measly 5 watt power adapter, and our wired ear pods. What did you expect? A quick charger in there? Apple hit you with that sight, boy! Now, we'll direct our attention to the start of the show and peel off the protective plastic that protects our phone from scratches during shipment, and voila, the cleanest your iPhone SE will ever be. Because there's only one size for the SE, the unboxing experience is 100% identical regardless of color. Everything else is matched inside, so I'll just go quickly over the other two unboxings. Now at first glance, the SE is almost indistinguishable from the 8. Like I mentioned before, the iPhone SE has the same body of the iPhone 8, only with those upgraded internals. You can quickly distinguish one from the other if you have a keen eye for detail and Apple products. For one, the new SE ditches the iPhone branding from the back and makes it look really, really clean. And also our Apple logo is now centered. But other than that, the entire chassis is unchanged. We still have our lightning port on the bottom, our speakers and microphone flanking the lightning port on both sides. On the 
right, we'll see our sim tray along with our sleep wake switch. We have zero action across the top, but on the left is where we'll find our volume up and down buttons along with our mute switch. While the iPhone branding has been removed from the phones, if you picked up the red phone, you will see the corresponding product red branding near the bottom. Apple logo at the center and at the top left is our LED True Tone flash module with slow sync, a microphone, and our single wide camera lens that will go more in depth in just a second. On the front, we'll see our gorgeous 4.7 inch retina widescreen LCD display with IPS technology. This thingamajig at the bottom is something called a home button. It's actually a touch capacitive home button and isn't an actual physical button. It only creates the illusion of a real press. For iPhone 10, 10R, 10S, 11 and 11 Pro users, this might seem like a weird flex, but this is a budget phone. Keep that in mind, so we're not going to get the shiniest bells and whistles, and that's a recurring theme you'll start to notice about this phone. If coming from any iPhone with a notch, this design may start to look antiquated, but believe me, don't judge a book by its cover. Finally, at the top is our speaker for phone calls flanked by a 7 megapixel selfie camera that's on the left side as opposed to being on the right side like on the iPhone 11 Pro. So one of the things you'll quickly notice is that every color now has those black borders on the top and bottom. Gone are the white borders, including on the white model. I don't know, I prefer the black front as that way when I'm consuming content like while watching Hulu or maybe a playlist by the one and only, the borders seem just to blend in rather than on the white ones which are a stark contrast to just watching some videos. The new 2020 SE, as I mentioned, has a starting price of $399 and comes in one of these three colors being red, black, and white and comes with a base storage of 64 gigabytes, which isn't all too exciting, but thankfully isn't 32 gigs or God forbid Apple pulls a 2017 Apple and they'll hook you up with a base 16 gigabyte model. No thanks. You can, however, increase your storage to 128 gigabytes, something I'd personally go for. It definitely is the sweet spot for only $50 more. Or if you want to follow through and so that everyone puts respect on your name, you can opt for queen slash king status and drop an extra 150 total above the baseline, which will net you 256 gigabytes of internal storage. So those are your price points, $399, 449 and 549. I don't know how many 256 gigabytes model will be sold, and sure the 399 entry price is eye-catching, but I'd say snag that 128 gigabytes for only $50 more. You'll thank me later when you're not deleting all of your photos in the middle of a concert because you ran out of storage. So let's cut right to the chase. What is all the hype about the new iPhone SE, especially if coming from an iPhone with a notch and face ID? Well, in truth, this baby right here packs enormous power in such a small body. Unfortunately, we didn't get the iPhone 5 chassis that many of us were anticipating. You know that really boxy design with those chamfered edges? Man, that was a beauty. I do think there's a niche market for tiny phones, though, that at one point were the norm. But now is like comparing a baby's hand to Shaq O'Neal's hand with our new modern phablets that are just enormous when you put them in comparison to some phones from 2010 or even 2012. Instead, we get the iPhone 8 body and while it is nitpicking, I just think the overall form factor of the iPhone 8 is completely overdone. Think about it, that's the same old stale design we've seen since the iPhone 6, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8 and now reincarnated into the iPhone SE. Yes, it's my own opinion and takes little away from the overall awesomeness of the phone, but it is worth mentioning. And by awesomeness, I mean that price tag. Dang, son. Okay, Apple, I see you clout chasing during quarantine. You know most Americans got only $1,200, while other more civilized nations like Canada got way more, but man, $400 for 2020 specs? This alone is the iPhone SE's defining feature and is the reason so many people are talking about it. Let's disregard jokes right now, like how only broke boys don't have AirPods, and look at the scale of economics for a second. Now, Apple has a complete line of iPhones ranging from budget to mid-ranged to ultra-premium flagship. So while an iPhone 11 Pro might be chump change to some, a $400 iPhone with a real Apple logo, not no bootleg, with modern specs, a great camera, and all of the fantastic features of iOS is a dream come true.
true. That is in America though. I am aware that in India, this same phone is retailing somewhere around $550 I believe, so it's less of a bargain there. But at least here in the States, $400 for this phone is spectacular. This phone largely is for those who still have an iPhone 6 or even a 7 or even perhaps an iPhone 8. Because when you compare it to the more modern phones with Face ID, sure you won't get Face ID, you won't get the edge to edge screen and you won't get that dual or triple camera array, but this demographic of people for the most part are okay with that. This is also a fantastic phone for older customers, you know boomers who hate technology and the most advanced technology they had when they were kids was a Walkman or an Atari 2600. This phone is perfect for them since it doesn't have all those fancy bells and whistles that the newer more modern looking phones have, but the longevity of this phone is what also sets this apart. Because to that demographic of people, why pay 1200 bucks and get taxed up the ass? when you can pay $400 and get 2020 modern internals that will last you well into the next 5, 6, maybe even 7 years and that's something you just can't take away from Apple. Their iPhone support is superb and far ahead of the competition. Where some Google and Samsung budget phones are only supported for at most 2 years, Apple's most current OS, being iOS 13, still fully supports the iPhone 6S and anything newer since then. Just for reference, the iPhone 6S was released in 2015, about 5 years ago. Imagine being able to have your phone fully supported well into, I don't know, iOS 18 if that's what they call it, 5 years from now in the year 2025, where all of this quarantine nonsense will be a thing of the past and in the history books and we'll be able to laugh about it over some drinks. And lastly, this wouldn't be a proper review without discussing our cameras. After all, while we're on quarantine, I feel we're all FaceTiming and Skyping a lot more than usual, at least I am. On the front, we have our typical 7 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 aperture and is your standard stuff. Portrait mode is featured on the front with those weird bokeh effects that are sort of bad sometimes, but overall does a decent job at creating the illusion of true depth through the software. The bigger story is our back sensor that's a 12 megapixel wide camera with an f1.8 aperture. It has up to a 5 times digital zoom, but best yet, this single sensor does have the same portrait mode found on the more upscale iPhones. Despite it being a single lens, the pictures do come out pretty nice and even the portrait shots. Just take a look at some of these. The pictures this camera takes are typical Apple photos. Every phone just has its own style and looks to their pics. Apple's camera takes shots that are very vivid while keeping more of the picture pretty much balanced with not too much noise and not too many blowouts. I'm excited as this camera is definitely a winner in my eyes. While you don't have the option of quickly switching from a telephoto to an ultra wide lens like you do on the iPhone 11 Pro line, this single sensor should suffice for the average consumer just looking to have a camera that takes decent shots and gets the job done. The camera is definitely above average and as I'll keep reiterating throughout this entire video, for $400 you simply cannot beat it. The SE is also rated at having an IP67 water and dust resistance rating, meaning it's not waterproof, only splash resistant. Don't be going swimming with it on Florida beaches now. This phone does support wireless charging and fast charging but not out of the box. You'll have to dish out even more cash in order to do so. You forget, we're talking about Apple, the company that sells $700 wheels for the Mac Pro. The SE also comes in with 3GB of RAM, 1GB less than on the iPhone 11 lineup, but that A13 Bionic is so well optimized and so powerful that you shouldn't have any issues. So to summarize, what is the iPhone SE? The SE is a hybrid phone, a phone that retains a form factor we are all very familiar with. We have a home button, no edge to edge screen, a single camera, but the internals of the iPhone 11 Pro including the A13 Bionic, the fastest chip in a smartphone as of April of 2020. My only thing is, yes, I'm going to use this as a backup phone, but man, coming from a Face ID phone with no buttons, god, it's just taking so much getting used to going backwards. It's like I'm time traveling having this home button. I'll catch myself multiple times trying to slide up from the bottom, you know, trying to go home just to realize that you must press the home button to do so. The phone delivers on everything it promises. It doesn't market itself as being that extra iPhone with all these fancy specs and features. It's simple, but the good kind of simple. 
everything you need in a nice compact package we're all familiar with. I think this phone is going to be a hit and definitely a bestseller, especially in this price sensitive environment we have going on due to stupid Rona. If you guys want to see a follow up video about the SE hands on or maybe a little deeper in camera comparison, make sure to drop a comment. But that's been it. And no, I didn't forget. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm super excited to announce that you watching. Yes, you. Wait, no, 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 not you, the person next to you over there in the back. Yes, you. You could have one of these iPhones 100% free. You can even choose your color. Entry is super simple. Simply subscribe to my channel with bell notifications and make sure to follow my buddy over in Spain, Nikias at Nikias Molina. And while you're on IG, why not give me a follow as well as I post a bunch of updates over there along with future plans, polls, and other giveaways. We will choose the winner on a live stream for all to see, 100% random, completely up to chance on May 17th, 2020. We figured we wanted to make someone's day during these unusual and difficult times. I'm so excited to see who the winner is, but guys, I have more and more content planned for you guys, so I'll be clocking out for now, but can't wait to see you all in my next video.